right, thanks for tapping in with me today. I have some exciting information data that I'm going to deliver. Um, basically have the year end figures for 2022. I've been waiting to, to get this out to you guys. Um, it's information that's very valuable to both buyers and sellers. Basically, I present the information, you take the information, you know, use it as you see fit. Uh, I am John Nichols, local Colorado realtor. Um, here really just to help you get information based on factual numbers uh, from our MLS. Uh, but before I jump into that, I definitely want to kind of give some tips based on what I see going on in the market right now. First and foremost, buyers, if you're a buyer, it's really time, if you're serious, it's time to get ready and start looking at the next steps, getting pre-qualified, pre-approvals, all that fun stuff, locking down with your uh, real estate agent because from what I see in the numbers and other things going on, the numbers and buyers are increasing. So buyers are coming back to the market. I think this week we're up something like 38% for mortgage applications. Sellers, tips for sellers. If you plan on selling your home, if you're serious about selling your home, start prepping now, start decluttering, start touching up paint, um, things that you've seen around your home that you know, you know, eventually I'll get to. Started addressing that stuff now. So when it's time to go to market, we can push enter, you can go versus us waiting a couple of weeks or a couple of months for your home to actually hit the market, right? So start some of that stuff you know needs to be addressed now. Start reaching out to uh, agents. You can reach out to me directly. Um, more than happy to help share some ideas on how we can get your home sold. So with that, we're going to jump into this information, uh, this data. I think it's going to be a lot of good points here. And again, you know, take it for what it's worth and use it how it best applies to you. Uh, I'm just delivering what I see going on in the market, which hopefully will indicate uh, trends. All right. So you can see here we're looking at December 22 numbers. It's also going to include the full year to date numbers. This information is provided by RE Colorado. Um, you know, working with your licensed realtor, this is a tool we have access to, we actually pay for to have access to. Uh, and the best way I can explain it is like, you know, you wouldn't go to a doctor's office and see a doctor about a broken arm who doesn't have an x-ray machine, right? So for us, <laughs> this is our x-ray machine. This gives us insight and information and data that you may not see um, anywhere else. So what we're looking at here are active listings. And the reason why I like this report is one, it goes all the way back to 2008. Well, we know that was right around the 2008 crash, right? So we're, we're in a window where those that are kind of doom and gloom are comparing everything to 2008. So this is gonna help us not only see kind of what was happening going on back then, but also the trends as we move forward to here uh, in 2022, right? In 2008, right, there was a crash. So there, from the perspective, there's a lot of inventory, foreclosures, things of that sort. So now we're trying to use what's going on in today's market due to the recession, the inclement interest rates, you know, what have be, to say, oh, well, 2008 is getting ready to happen again. So once again, here are the numbers, and this is what we're looking at. Um, active listings, this is 2020. Here in the middle, we have 2021 and 2022. So active listings for December, as you can see, in 2020 rates were lower than they are today, right? 7,793 active listings. Well, we finished December with 8,661. So not too much of a difference there. The biggest difference was in 2021. And obviously in 2021, we didn't have as many active listings at the end of December because homes were selling at a much faster rate. Right. So because they were selling faster, it was hard to get this number up and to sustain what was going on right now. Homes are sitting a little bit longer. So we have um, a longer, uh, a larger amount of homes actually active on the market. But if we go down here a little bit, we can see that closing out this year, the amount of active inventory is for December is relatively below the average. Right, so active inventory is even lower than what we had back in 2008. In December, you know, obviously we're under the 10,000 mark. There were periods during 
2021 and 2022 where we were well below the 10,000 mark and even at one point below the 5,000 mark. So this is when overbidding and pricing got kind of crazy. Yes, homes are sitting longer right now. However, when I look at inventory and looking forward to what may potentially be coming in spring, below this 10,000 mark for Denver is still, like I said, we're looking at some of the lowest points um, really going back to 2008. So still relatively low inventory here, active listings, which would be inventory. Now, here we are for pending listings. So what this is showing us are the homes that are on the market that have received and accepted an offer. So it's pending on its way to closing. And again, for December, you can see the numbers for pending listings have kind of fallen off the map 2020, 2021, 2022. To me, is it concerning? The concerning part, not so much because we know why. We know pending listings have dropped primarily due to the increase in interest rates. Now we're starting to see those rates come down and over the last 45 days, we've had some pretty good drops in the interest rate. So we finished December negative compared to 2021. So less homes were pending and on their way to closing in December. Um, and then obviously here you have the year to date. That trend to me follows simply because rates started to go up, you know, towards the end of summer as rates went up, there were fewer homes pending, fewer homes under contract. So again, to me, this is not as concerning because we knew that the uptick in rates caused this. And now we're starting to see the rates go down. So as I look ahead, I would say as rates come down, this number here would significantly increase for 2023. And basically here you can see since 2008, if you were to look at the bottom point of this chart, there's still a pretty significant uptick um, as far as the amount of homes pending, which would result in the amount of homes closing year over year. and then. We know we have this drop off. Once again, we've touched on that. Interest rates would be the, the corporate there. So here we have new listings. So this is the amount of homes that are fresh to the market. So amount of homes that came to market during these particular time frames. Again, looking at December in 2022, we had 4,000 new homes come to market. 2021, 4,000 new homes come to market. 2022, 2000, you know, 827 come to the market. So fewer homes come to market this December. Obviously, sellers a little nervous about what's going on with interest rates, so they were less likely to put their home on the market. To me, this is also an indication of us not being able to sustain inventory, right? So if inventory is dropping, there's fewer homes available to purchase. So it, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. So we have homes sitting on the market, but we also have a scenario where homes are not coming to the market, right? So as a buyer, you're sitting in the middle and you're like, oh, well, there's great opportunity because all these homes have been on the market 60 plus days. So I'm going to take my time and, and kind of see what's going on and all that, which is great. We don't want to make a knee-jerk reaction. However, we also don't want to take six months because six months from now you're in that spring season that summer season and if this trend here continues we're going to be back in the scenario that we were um 2021 2022 where there was a significant lack of inventory for the spring buyers year to date numbers 22 2022 was a great year but as you can see overall holistically new listings, that inventory number just didn't catch up to 2020 and 2021. Here, historically, we can see how new homes come to the market. And typically, all of these peaks we see here would be that spring time frame. And then all of the valleys here would typically be December, right? So this December, we actually did drop to about the average number as far as new homes come to market. So less than 4,000 um, the past couple of years, back to 2020, we were well above that amount, you know, still under 4,000. We got over 4,000 in 2021, um, but 
not as many homes coming to market today than we've seen, you know, the past two years or so. So here we're going to touch on closed listings. So again, finishing December, pretty good drop here in closed listings. But to me, I want to focus on the year to date number. Um, when you're looking at the year to date number, once again, it was a wild year. However, total closed listings were still down 19%, 19.2%. Now, once again, during the spring, summer months, houses had no chance in on the market. I mean, they were gone immediately. But even with all of that going on, we still didn't have enough homes coming to market in order to ex exceed the previous year. So really, to me, like, the story that I'm seeing is 2022 was just holistically the year of, of low inventory, lack of inventory, not enough homes on the market. We're seeing that roll into December. And, you know, here we are in January. It would be very interesting to see if that trend continues, because if that trend does continue as we roll into 2023, I would say that this number in 2023 will drop even more. And, and less inventory based on the trend we're seeing right now. So the median close price is just giving us an idea of what the home that sits in the middle is selling for, right? Not at the top end of the spectrum, not at the lower end of the spectrum. This is what the, I don't wanna use the word average because median is different from average, but this is what the home in the middle is actually selling for. And We've been told, oh, the prices are dropping, the prices are dropping and, and all that fun stuff. But here's the fact, 2020, 442,000, 2021, 521,000, December, 2022, 535,000. So even in 2022, there was still an increase over December of 2021, right? So we still seen an uptick and yes, things are at a discounted price. However, to me, when I'm looking at the numbers, they're the discounted price compared to the peaks of spring. When you're looking at year over year numbers, we're where we, we are where we should be right now. Same thing here when you look at year to date, we're seeing the price increase from 2020, 2021, 2022. We know 2022, again, that spring summer season was really driving this, but the numbers are up. And then this really gives you a better picture. Now, again, individuals talking about the crash from that 2008 time frame. You see things were a little level to about 2012. Then we started our gradual uptick and we got into the COVID era, era and then we seen that significant jump. And now we're on this downward trend. So in order for us to experience the type of drop in home value that we seen in 2008, we would need our 2000 or 2013 prices to drop into the range of about 2020. So if you're looking at 2020 here, 400,000, and right now we're above 500, 565, that's a significant drop for us to experience for someone to say, hey, 2008 is happening again. Right now, looking at the trends, looking at the numbers, yes, we're down, but we're down from the peaks of spring and summer. We are not down from the historical average, right? So even if we go back to, I mean, right now, we're still above even the peak of 2021, right? And homes were already increasing at that time. So that's just some food for thought. Just think about that as a buyer and seller. Home values today are still higher than they were in the peak buying season of 2021. So something to think about there. So today, here we are, percent of closed price to list price. So this is telling us when a home goes to market at a certain dollar amount, how far is that dollar amount off from when we close at the table? Right, so 2020, we're right around 100%, 2021, 101%, 2022, 98%. Now, this 98% for December here, obviously, we're still in that price correction window. So, we do go to market with a certain price, 
for the market to tell us, well, this isn't the right price. So then that's when you start to see the price drops, right? So this price drop um, and then being able to close, get under contract at X amount of dollars under the asking price is causing this here. Is it significant? It's not significant when you're looking at it as far as percentages. I think the more significant amount is when you actually look at the dollar amount, right? So when you look at the dollar amount, what we see here is once again, and this is average, right? So different from the median, but what we see is the prices are still up year over year, right? 2021, 2020, prices are still up year over year. So again, the percentages can show you one picture, but what we are truly concerned about is the dollar amount, right? Um, someone can go to market at 600,000 and close at, you know, 580,000. That's a certain percentage under that asking price. However, if while on the market, that price dropped from 600,000 to 550,000, and then the asking price is now 550,000 and someone buys that home for 560, then you're going to see a plus over in the percentages, a plus over the asking price. So the list price compared to closing. So that's where the, the percentages play a difference. All right, so here we are. You made it to the end. Thanks again for tapping in. If you like the information you've seen here today, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, just full review. Bottom line is prices, as far as a seller, you are still up. You are still above previous years. Um, prices for a buyer, you still have the ability right now to get a discount. We will eventually hit the fork in the road where there's going to be more buyers coming back to the market and the opportunity for a discount on the list price um, may not be there. But again, thanks for, for stopping in. You like the information you see here, be sure to follow. I will be posting more videos like this. Appreciate your time, your support. Um, feel free to touch base with me if you have any questions, whether you're buying or selling or looking for an investment. Again, John Nichols with Coldwell Banker Realty, licensed Colorado realtor. Um, peace. Have a great day.